Shoveling snow, cleaning parks, walking little old ladies, raking leaves for old ladies, stuff like that. So that's what I said. All right, I've been on TV now for the last little while. I went down to the bus station my opening day when I registered for mayor, asking all the kids with my camera, would you work for bus bucks? Six bus rides an hour, 12 bus bucks an hour. Yeah, yeah, everybody, every kid. One lady said, my husband will work for 12 bus bucks an hour. So, I put the video on the internet, and more now, all the debates, I put them up, the whole thing, if you want to see the boring guys too, and then parts of just my clips, because they go faster. And uh, so, during the campaign now, typical problems. I hear Chamber of Commerce is going to have a debate. I wasn't invited. Ah, oh, God, I'm going to go have to crash it again. And then the next night, Rogers is given another televised debate, and the last time I was up Rogers, Tim Philp had the police take me away for wearing my button. See, years ago when I first came here, I used to bring props and I'd show people all the stuff and United Nations and press clippings and all sorts of neat stuff. Um, Philp didn't like that because I was the only guy with an entertaining presentation, so he banned all props and buttons. I call it the Fuhrer Philp rule number 12 on appearance and presentation. And I'm saying, what a right this. So I pulled it out during the debate, and he had Fuhrer Philp had the cops take me away. And I fought it to the Supreme Court of Canada. And they said, well, you know, showing a button, that's not good enough reason for not giving him a fair share of time. But since 1993, there's been a decision, the courts took away your right to a fair share of time anyway. So they didn't even have to invite you. So I lost. So it's official now. You don't have the right to see all the candidates no more because Rogers gets to decide. But I found a way to hurt it back later. So here we are at the Chamber of Commerce. I haven't been invited. So I got my video saying, OK, I'm going in. I don't know what's going to happen. Cop at the door, you know, as usual. But I got in, and they had set up tables for all the candidates, not me or nor Winston. And uh, so anyway, I walked in. What's going on? How come I can't participate? Well, the moderators come up and say, well, there was an expositor reported you saying that you only wanted to be mayor for a day. 
long enough to install the software needed to retire. And I said, well, come on now. Just because I could install the software to fix the banking system, install the lets to count the bus tickets. Really hard to do. In the morning, yeah, I'd spend the afternoon booking a poker game for my retirement party. It was a joke! And the guy in the newspaper printed it like Terrell promises he's going to quit if he wins. You know, not true, but that's his excuse. So I'm going, lame excuse, lame excuse, and for 20 minutes I heckle the place. All right, walk around heckling my opponents who won't stand up for me, except for Diane Austin, the lady. Only one said, yes, you should have a right to have me have a table and be on the show with us. Always makes so I can walk around saying, hey, how come none of the men got the balls to stand up for me like the lady did? What happened? Leave your testosterone at home? Well, after 20 minutes of heckling, moderator comes up and I say, you're going to change the format? He said, yes, we will. <laughs> so then, you know, what was the format? Two-minute presentation and back to the table. It wasn't even worth going. Except for the 20 minutes of video heckling now. Anyway, another situation where I had to go and crash the bait and beat my way in. Next night, Phils, Rogers, they sent me a consent form. It said, sign this consent, this is valuable time, and if you want it, you've got to sign it, and in it you promise that we own everything, all copyrights, we can chop it up any way we want, and we can libel and defame you too. And I go, well, why do you guys want to be able to libel and defame me? So I put not right in front of the libel and defame, and a not in front of sole copyright, and a third not, and I sent it back. Oh, not good enough, you know, you've got to sign it or we're not going to let you on. So on the last day, I signed it. So I go down to the uh, city hall, and of course I got my camera too. And for the t first 20 minutes, I'm heckling Rogers because here's my move. Okay, Supreme Court of Canada says that Big Brother has the right to exclude anybody they want. Since 93. Before that, they had to give me equitable time. I was in the courts bitching about it all the time. I got screwed. But after 93, the court said, you know, in debates there are so many different opinions that you really don't need them all to be democratic. Justice Dumbo Dugan, if you ever remember him, okay, I've had a lot of bad experiences with that ugly judge. But anyway, so that's the Desmond decision where I lost my right. So what's the only way to get back at Rogers? Well, if I can walk into a debate, turn on my camera, go home and upload it to my website, why can't City Hall run the debate? Videotape it, go upload it to City Hall's website. Why are they giving Rogers the copyright on our entertainment, on our action? So my pitch for that show was kicking Rogers out of the control booth of having City Hall run the debate and post it on the internet. And now we don't have Fuhrer Phelps rule number 12. I can put my button on. I can put my hat on. I can show press clippings. I can be entertaining, not dull and gray like Fuhrer Felt wants Rogers to be. <laughs> so anyway, that's going to be my campaign after the election, too, though. You think the other candidates like being pushed around by Rogers, knowing that the video can be chopped up any way they want, and then they can defame you and libel you forever, and there's nothing you can do, right after CBC did it to me? Well, then we're going to do it again. So at the end of the debate, after slamming them and well, in the two minutes I got to speak on whatever I wanted, the opening and the one minute at the end, plus the 20 minutes of heckling before that I videotaped and posted, all it was was about Rogers, kicking him out of the control room, going back to being scribes and bleachers like they should be, or covering the debate, not running the debate. So, that's going to be the mission by the next election, is to kick Rogers out of the control room and run the debates ourselves. Didn't make the news. None of the newspapers, nobody reported that that's what I'm going to do. Oh, another beautiful mistake they made. In walks Bucky. You all know Bucky, don't you? You know, so anyway, Bucky walks in, he's late. And they go, oh, you haven't signed your consent form and you're late. And I'm going, let him on, let him on. <laughs> Come on, it's his, he's old, okay? And uh, then they say, oh, sorry, you haven't been here on time and we're not going to let you on. So I gave him a call. I said, you know, Bucky, if Mark Little or Chris Freo had showed up late, they would have let him on, right? I think I'm going to write you a letter of complaint to the CRTC oh. about them not letting you have you because you came late. 
or whatever excuse they want, they're going to file a letter of complaint. Let's push it up. Imagine Bucky walking into the Supreme Court of Canada. Anyway, different story. So I can Anyway, I'm pissed off at them, and I'm going to hurt them if I can. So, now my campaign. Well, here I am at City Hall, trying to pass out my flyers on the bus box. And not one person, not one adult would take it. Not one. So I got to mention it in the, in the thing, you know. Oh, these, you know, these people are so dumbed down and so debt trodden and burdened by their debts that they really couldn't care less whether kids have jobs or not. Just ain't important, ain't on their, on their screen. You know, they don't watch politics anyway. So I said, I'm going to focus my campaign on the kids. So I made up a new flyer. I just got it yesterday. And I'm going to read it to you. It's going to take about three, four minutes. But this is what I'm handing out to the kids in Brantford. Vote John Termel for Brantford Mayor. I'm John, the engineer Termel, running for Mayor of Brantford to set up an online Brantford Unilets Millennium Resolution C6 compatible time bank, where youth and underemployed can be rewarded for an hour's community service with 12 bus bucks, bus tickets, and use it for a losing resource that can be bartered to get things done in our municipalities. Credit it to a bus box time bank account at City Hall so you can call on that bank time later to pay for help when you need it. Similar to a babysitting circle, except dentists can charge more hours per hour for free market. So you'll be able to earn bus bucks, not only shoveling snow, but cleaning parks, Proctor University campus, and helping out the elderly whose thank you on a one hour note is all that's needed to make it treasured by tank banks around the world. See, time banks treasure volunteer hours. Therefore, they just register the hours that volunteers put in and they get a number. Well, if you do something for any oldster who signs, thank you for the, you know, picking up my leaves, that becomes countable on your account that you're proud of when you're asking the world to give me credit when I want to go overseas. So, elderly sign and sit, they receive, sign thank you notes, but do not work. So start with your own grandma. Go visit grandma an hour a week and make her sign thank you for coming. And that counts, you know, so you should be happy. Every municipal employee, police officer, fireman, the mayor, a $5 an hour bus bucks bonus. With bus bucks time bank accounts, you'll be able to afford public transit, <coughs> municipal community centers, afford your municipal taxes, part of it, and afford part of your purchases in participating stores. Four pledged, says three, but I got another one today. Four pledged so far. Who will take your bus bucks for a percentage of the prices to get you in the store with the rest of the cash. And five, afford overseas accommodations at time banks in 58 countries or other municipalities at time banks. In 99, I paid for 39 nights out of 40 in Europe with an IOU for a night back in Canada. Worth five hours. You know, a country that's time, not marks and francs, it's hours, okay? So, you will be able to trade hours with the world or bus bucks in Brantford, too. So, I'm talking to kids now. They're interested in working for bus tickets, even if adults aren't. And how many kids you said no? None. Anyway, I emailed 1,800 municipal politicians in Ontario with the idea of bus bucks to try and start a bus bucks bandwagon to say that, hey, our kids can stay in Ottawa if Rob, what's his name? Gauthier gets elected, and Ottawa kids can stay in Brantford if I get elected because the time banks will be connected. So just like I went overseas and I paid with an IOU back in Canada, all of us will be able to do that too. So I've emailed 1,800 can. I'm a WordStar user from 30 years ago. Remember WordStar? Well, that means I can do word processing as fat, five times faster than you mouse people, okay? Because I never take my eyes off the screen and my fingers do all the cursor movements. Move around, cut, chop, move, this, this. Repetitive like a machine, like a song. And next thing you know, I've got 1,800 names in six hours. That's a word star. <laughs> and that's the only example in high tech where I saw an inferior program, word perfect, defeat a superior program, word star. Sad, eh? Weird. Anyway, bus bucks. So, who knows if the video goes viral, I'm asking people in candidates in towns with buses to all push bus bucks too. This is something that can be taken global.
the idea of using your unused bus capacity to put kids to work. And I don't care how many adults want to, they're happy with their welfare checks or their slave wage. The kids got nothing. And nobody worries about that. Okay, so now for kids, what the kids can do, what the youth can do. If you watch the videos at my site, you'll realize that adults at the Rogers debate were so downtrodden under the debts that they don't care at all about jobs for youth. Kids love it, but not one adult was interested. And I stand them for it. So if you want a bus bucks job, you will have to explain to your family and friends who probably really don't care who are going to vote for it anyway, because they're all still the same. What having a bus bucks job would mean. Two, pitch your favorite merchants to take the bus bucks in this way, like I've done to the four so far. Al, where are you? There he is. Al! Yes. I got this whole database of students who are going to start shoveling your lane way when the plows go by at your home and your business. Will you give that database of snow shovelers a 10% discount on haircuts? Wow. I'm going to build a database of kids who are going to shovel snow, and all I want you to do is give them a 10% discount on haircuts if they come in, if I send them to your store. You want, you want me to send the guy in with, with a 10% discount and nine bucks in cash? Will you give him a 10% discount? Okay, well I'll continue reading then. I talk, you know. Uh, so I said, we're organizing, this is what I said to the other guys, we're organizing a gang of youth to shovel your snow drifts after the plow goes by. Would you give our database of shovelers a 10% or more discount if I, you know, tell them to come shopping in your store? Stromboli Pizza, Minuteman Press, Don Warner's Martial Arts Academy said, sure. And today, Branford Martial Arts said, sure. But then you say, well, don't lose the discount, 10%. Take 10% bus bucks that you can spend elsewhere, too. OK? Don't eat the discount. We're giving you bus tickets. It's better than a discount, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I got four businesses. I created a list. Uh, busbuckm.htm, which is a list of the four merchants in town so far who've said they'll take bus bucks for 10% so far. So I'm going to build up the list over time, and I'm asking the kids to go build up their own list of places they can spend their bus bucks in because go to the Bus Bucks Brantford Yahoo group, join it to announce that you work for bus bucks. And if you convince a store to take some bus bucks, post it and I'll treasure it like a five hour bill, 60 bus bucks, worth a night's accommodations anywhere at a time bank in the world. So, follow, make a sign, a sticker, a placard saying, I'll work for bus bucks, Pope John Trammell. And wear it and tell everybody hmm. why getting a job with bus bucks is important. So, you guys have to get the adults thinking because they're not doing it. Finally, I said, if I'm not elected. I'll set up a time, i help set up a time bank to help Brantford youth mobilize to perform the same services. Paid with youth bucks. That'll be honored in the Brantford stores and in the world's time banks, if not at Brantford City Hall. So, Brantford youth bucks will be honored around the world and in some of the Brantford stores, but not at city's buses. That's the only difference. And I said, there are other time banks in the world that don't have buses. You don't need buses to run a successful time bank. But boy, it would sure help. So I called up my printer and I said, how much would it cost to get little stickers that say, I'll work for bus clubs? You know? I mean, I'm, I'm only putting up these little flyers here. And the lady said, well, it's three bucks for a page of this stuff, you know? And uh, at about 30 decals per, that's going to be about almost 10 cents each, you know, per little outlook for bus bucks. So I'm thinking, what can I do to, you know, make this affordable? And I say, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to take my little flyer here, and I'm going to see if I can't turn it into a button without having to actually print anything by simply sticking this on the, on the bottom there. So. I'm going to see if I can't get any of the kids in town to walk around with an all work for bus bucks job. Vote John Turner. And we'll see if we can't wake up the adults to what's at stake here. 
So that is my political campaign. I sent out the flyer to 1800. I must have at least a dozen who've written back and said, great idea, great idea. And I said, okay, I'm going to write a post to everybody, tell them that you dozen have liked it, so vote for you. Maybe more will come along because I'll send them copies too. So anyway, that's where my campaign stands right now. I got two weeks to mobilize the kids who have everything to lose in front of a seriously bored and apathetic electorate of adults who really don't know what's at stake. So, sure, there's been a little bit of press. I must admit, the, the caricature of me with Termel's bucks, that was kind of cute in the brand news. But it said in Termel we trust, and it should have said in Bradford buses we trust. So anyway, that's the campaign. We're going to see what happens, how many more people around the province are going to support bus bucks. But it's not an idea that's going to be able to die after the election. Just because it was born in Brantford and rejected in Brantford doesn't mean nobody else in the world isn't going to wise up. I mean, you guys are going to end up looking like idiots for saying no. Like my hometown of Ottawa looks like idiots for refusing interest-free loans for 30 years of elections I've offered them. Vote for me, I'll give you the interest-free no loan. No! All right, die in poverty and misery. Anyway, so that's it on the politics. And on the legal front, well, the Dragon Stand first case, the judge was really mulling over because he knew I'd been shafted and he didn't want to dismiss it. Then I walked in and said, oh, they went and did it again. And he went, oh, okay, now I can dismiss this, go get them. So that's what happened, basically. They argued that the signing of the consent before the show allowed them to chop it up and to libel and defame me. Now, I'm going to be arguing they can't do that on appeal. But I had to sue them all over again for the defamation I couldn't do the first time because I had improper notice because I did it right the second time. So that's all coming up within the next week or two. But at some point I'm going to sit down and I'm going to watch the Dragon's Den and I'm going to intersperse my comments in it so I can then upload it and show it with fair comment. Otherwise they'd claim copyright violation. But I might have lost my suit. And of course they say I owe them 8,000 bucks in lawyer's fees, which you can come on right down to the Brantford Poker Casino and sit beside me at the table till I hit a win, you know? <laughs> Before they're going to get that, right? What are the chances the casino's going to let them come and collect off me at the table, right? And you can ask him, I'm one of the world's best poker players. Matter of fact, there's a new book just came out. Where is it? I have it here. Canadian gamblers, Canadian blackjack players, Canadian poker players. And there it is, number two, Daniel Negreanu. You heard of Daniel Negriano? Anybody else heard of yeah. Daniel Negriano? <laughs> Guess who number one is? Ha ha! Johnny Engineer. <laughs> so anyway. And finally, on the marijuana front, on the front to get our generation to get off the destroyer of brain cells, alcohol, and to get onto the regrower of brain cells, marijuana, to stop all that Alzheimer's and stuff. And uh, right now I've got nine different appeals, all in the Court of Appeal, arguing that, whoa, since the Crown Attorney said that, wow, since the exemption hasn't been working, it means that the prohibitions haven't been working like the last time, because the court said you have to have an exemption to have a valid prohibition. And if they've now admitted the exemption was flawed, we're going to make them admit the prohibition was flawed. So I got nine years worth of con bogus convictions I got to get a chance to get erased. And I have the highest judge in Ontario, Justice Rosenberg, right now, who is pondering all these cases. And when the Crown made a motion to have my strongest case thrown out, Martin, the judge answered the Crown's case saying, this is not an appropriate case for Section 685 for frivolous and vexatious cases. So go and deal with what Hitzig said about no green light, with what it has to do about the red light, the prohibition. Wow. So we've been handing this to all the judges we've been going to. And two and a half weeks ago, I was in Peterborough on another case. Same argument. Crown admits that the exemption wasn't working. I want my charges quashed. And the judge reserved her decision. And two weeks later, still thinking about it. So there's going to be a breakthrough on the legal front. And probably around the same damn time as California legalizes it and then Harper will come along and legalize it. I'll have spent 10 years fighting to get it legal when I finally do next year, you know, in the legislation too. 
But nevertheless, I mean, it's been a hell of an adventure looking at corruption in the judiciary and corruption in the bar and let's face no. it, where is the government going to put their moles? Wouldn't you expect them to infiltrate the drug movement? You'd be stupid not to. And a disorganized, poor bunch of, you know, protesters, who do you think gravitates to the top of the guys with cash and sophistication? The moles! So the top lawyer, top publisher, top politician, when I came out saying, let's kill the law, all of a sudden they're fighting me. Whoa, all I want to do is kill prohibition, go back to fighting banks, and all of a sudden I get resistance from all the leadership. Well, it's kind of interesting, but it's what you expect. Same thing with the banking system. 25 years ago when the first let system started, we had these incredible infiltrators, I'll call them, whose purpose was to go there and argue. And say, can't do this, can't do that, you know. Terry Cotton was saying, we don't want Tom Kennedy using let's green dollars for multi-level marketing. And I'm going, who cares what they use the chips for? Why not? And yet, you got these guys, when you already had 50 underground currency systems, it was easy to plant banks through moles to go argue them to death. And most did. And pass rules and say, we don't want Coca-Cola, and we don't want big accounts, we want to keep it small. Oh, yeah. No paper currency, velocity of 50 for your chips. Every transaction recorded, high costs, break them all. So for years you have these lead systems run by morons or moles and founding and feeling, but suddenly, whoa, Facebook is offering to set up a new credit system. And every time you pay somebody with a few of your gaming credits, instead of the cash out of your bank account, banks get no big. And every time people in Africa now who have no bank accounts because they're too poor, they take your cell phone, because they can afford cell phones, mm -hmm. and they say, transfer 10 minutes from my account to his account and give my mama in the village a pound of beef. It's happening. Arabia, cell phone cards, Bradford, bus bucks, bus tickets. So it's all the same. Community currencies are exploding all over the planet. At my site, my Facebook page, I document all the times the banks are losing big, you know. Oh, a new database here, Facebook announcing credits, Acebox, you know, Craigslist, Google, all big databases trying to lure you to using their chips because they get to hold your cash, but nevertheless, the banks get no thing. Which is why in third world countries, when was the last time you heard a real riot unless the Americans were fomenting a war? Most of Africa's pretty quiet. Why? They're using their own chips and they're paying no interest anymore. They're too poor to blood suck. So the banksters are in the rich nations like us, and we're throwing our cash at them to hope they don't go down, and they can't help going down. They're already dead in the third world. They're just here to collect on the last suckers with anything left to lose. Us! But anyway, that's another story. So, <laughs> anyway. So these are the guys I believe, I'm an ultimate conspiracy theorist. I believe there's a conspiracy of rich guys to keep the poor guys poor. I believe it's the same conspiracy that Jesus beat up in the temple 2,000 years ago. And, uh, you know, all the good religious guys from Muhammad to Jesus to Isaiah to Buddha to the Hindus all say, interest on money is a no-no. Now, Ezekiel was best. Ezekiel said, it's bad to charge usury or excessive interest. Well, geez, doesn't our dictionary say usury is excessive interest? What is Ezekiel a moment? Repetitious? No. I charge you interest on cows or grain. You can pay it back reasonably. But if I charge you interest on gold or credits, and I'm the only guy who issues the credits, you've got a death gamble. You've got to get one of your neighbor's chips to pay me off. And that means the borrowers all have to fight it off. So that's why all the religions condemn the guys who inflict death gamble on their neighbors, banksters. And I see the world changing in the next two years. They talk about the Mayan prophecy like it's going to be bad. What if it's going to be good? Okay? I keep looking at the world saying, wow, they've lost Africa and no big out of Africa. In Japan, 60% of the people are connected to the time bank for health. 60% of the people are getting their health done by working for it for their moms wow. and their families. I'm saying, wow, big databases, Google, I mean, sorry, Facebook, 500 million people, 
now have access to the trading mechanism if they haven't yet standardized to the time standard of money yet. But that's the next step. As soon as they say 50 ace bucks is equal to one hour, well, guess what? 20 green marks in Germany is an hour, and 60 green francs in France is an hour, and 12 bus bucks in Canada is an hour, and guess what? We can now trade with anybody on Facebook in hours. So, time is the final human common denominator, and it is the one collateral stuff that the banks won't harm. So at the United Nations, I got this wonderful opportunity in 2000 to give a speech and to coin the time standard of money where not only commodities are collateral at a bank, but also human time. And in that way, man becomes equal to a piece of gold. So I'm hoping to start a movement that will go viral, tricking people into getting youth to deliver energy, massive amounts of useful work, because they think that the real value is the bus tickets when I know it's the work. And I'd have paid them the year before without the bus tickets. The mere fact that I'm denominating bus tickets only makes it attractive because there's one surefire buyback guy that guarantees the chips. So one guarantor of Brantford's chips, the buses, or the guarantor of Brantford's chips being our ability to promise the world we'll find accommodations for someone who wants to give us a five-hour bill somewhere. Even if not me, I'll find a neighbor and I'll work it off. So that's what I'm hoping to pull off. In the next two weeks in Brantford, I've got some candidates all over the province already who have written in support. And I'm going to see if I can't build that up into some kind of network so that even after the election, even if no bus bucks candidates get in, well, we have a network ready to set up a youth bucks database, immediately compatible with the time banks of the rest of the world. So, remember my model from my page. What is it now? It's a two-line two poem. I want no cops and gambling, sex or drugs or rock and roll. I want no usury on loans. Pay cash or time, no dole. That's my yeah. name. Because it's ethical. 